Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd So I wanted to speak about some masail or some issues related to tahara, related to purifying itself. Like we talked about the last time, we talked about the shurut, the salat, we talked about the conditions for salat, those things which need to be in place before you pray. Like we said, you have to have sincerity in your niya, you have to pray in the direction of the qibla, you have to have your clothes pure, your ground, the place you're going to pray needs to be pure, and you have to be pure. And then we talked about the different types of hadith, the if you have impurities from using the bathroom or the major impurities. Uh, so I wanted to talk about some of the things related to water and najasa and things like this. So first, we have to know that water is pure. That means rainwater and river water and water from the sea is pure. You can use it for wubu. Okay, and I think we already know that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the water as pure. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and water is uh, descends from the from the skies in order that you may purify with it. So that lets us know that rainwater and things like that is pure. Also, water in the sea is pure. So if you need to make wudu from the sea, from the ocean, from the river, it is pure, uh, and you can you can do that. And you can make ghusl as well. And with that, also you can clean impurities. You can clean najasa, that which is dirty and filthy. For example, urine, akramakum Allah, or number two, poo poo. You can purify that with what? What did I just say? With water, mashallah. So you can use seawater. You can use regular water. You can use even drinking water if you have to, to purify yourself. If you get some najasa on your clothing, for example, by accident, or somebody spills it on you or something, you can clean it off of yourself with water, with good water, okay? And another thing, what happens if, for example, you have a container and someone, maybe there's a, a, a baby or someone who uses the bathroom and something splashes, akramakum Allah, from their urine in the place you're going to make wudu. Can you make wudu with that water? No. Okay, everybody says no. Any other? So th with this, there's some details. There's some details with this. So if there's a little bit of urine or poo-poo or blood that gets in that water that you're going to make wudu with, then as long as that is if the water is a certain amount, if it's a, like enough for uh, at least a big pot, this is what some of the ulama, they say, that it needs to be uh, what's kulatain, which is, I'm not sure how many kilos of water, but if it's like a big uh, bucket of water and some urine or something falls into that. If it doesn't change its smell, it doesn't change the taste of the water, and it doesn't change the color of the water, you can still use it, even though you may not want to. But it's still halal, it's still permissible to use that water for tahara because it didn't change it. It didn't change its color. That's what we look at. We look at the color, we look at the smell, and we look at the taste. So as long as your uh, the najasa that falls into your water you want to make wudu, if it doesn't change it, then you can use it. Everybody understands? Everybody's okay. Good. Uh, another thing. So that means that is if your water is mixed... What happens if it changes the smell, but it doesn't change the taste? There's some poo, a karamakum Allah, or some urine, and it changes the smell of that water. You can't use it, exactly. And if you have no water, you make tayammum. 
Tayammum is when you use clean earth to uh, to make uh, tahara, to purify yourself for salat. Okay? So tayammum, you make it by hitting the ground. Okay? You hit the ground with your hands or hit the wall wherever you can find dust, okay, or, or clean earth. You hit it and then you wipe your your hands like this. You wipe your top of your hands, the right and the left, and you wipe your face. And that is tayammu. Okay? Yeah. So uh and, and there's a hadith which many, many a hadith would show us and illustrate for us uh, about the tayammum. And the Prophet وسلم, in a hadith, the hadith of Ammar, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was, uh, he didn't, he was afraid about his, his prayer. He came to the Prophet وسلم, and he, uh, was not sure because he didn't have, uh, he, he didn't pray because he didn't, or actually he, he did pray, possibly he did pray, but he didn't know what to do as far as how to make tayammum. So what he did, because he had najasi, he didn't have any water, he didn't have enough water, what he did is he rolled on the ground. He was rolling on the ground in the dirt. And then he, Per, perhaps he prayed after that, and he told the Prophet Sallallahu what he did. And the Prophet Sallallahu said, "Inna makana yakfika hakida, wa darba biyadehi al arm, fa masa bihima waj wa kafe." So the Prophet Sallallahu said, "It's enough for you. It's sufficient for you to do like this." He said, making sure that you don't have to roll in the dirt to make tayammum and get all your body dusty or with dirt. But instead you make tayammum, he said, he said, it's sufficient that you do like this. So he hit the ground. For He hit the ground with his hands. And then he wiped them and his wudge and his face. Okay? So that's how you make the tayammum. And that right there will make it sufficient so you can pray. If you don't have any water, you can make tayammum. And tayammum is good if you have no water and you need to make it for even the big najasa, you can do so. Because uh, if you have no water, if you have no water, because you only make tayammum if you do not have any water. If you do not have any water, you cannot find any water, and it's time for the salat, and you, uh, and and you. Let's see. And for example, if you have some money and you can buy water, but it's it's very expensive. It's difficult for you to spend your money to buy water. Then you can even make tayammum in that situation. Or if you have only a little bit of water and you need it for drinking, maybe you're in the desert and you only have a little bit of drinking water, then you can make tayammu instead of using your drinking water because you need that to drink. Okay? So those are some of the situations with regard to uh, tayammu. Uh, something else that's... Some of the things that break your tayammum, okay? Tayammum, so we, we talk about, what's tayammum again? No. So I don't know where you were. You were in space as usual. Uh, who else know? What's tayammum? Huh? Jazakum Allah khairan, Allah yibarak fiki. Naam, tayammum is what you do when you have no water. Tayammum is what you do when? When you have no water. Good. And you need to make wudu. So you, you, 
uh, you make the tayyumum. How do we make the tayyumum again? We need to use water for tayyumum. Okay. No. How do we make tayyumum? Who remembers? Mumtaz, yes. So, and also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, فَأَمْسُهُ بِهُجُوهِكُمْ وَأَيْدِيَكُمْ مِنْهُ That uh, you wipe your face and your uh, hands with it, meaning the clean earth. That you use the clean earth, Sa'id and Tayyibin, to wipe yourself for the tayammum. So that will be in the place of wudu. So what breaks your tayammum is the same things that break your wudu.